Hello guys and welcome back. So in this section we'll talk about Angular's life cycle hook uh, in components. Okay. So a component has a life cycle in Angular which is managed by the uh, by Angular itself and Angular is responsible for creating it, rendering it, uh, creating and rendering its children, checking all its data bound properties and destroying it uh, before it can be removed from the DOM. Okay. So Angular basically provides us with some lifecycle hooks that can provide us a visibility into these key life moments of a component so that we can act uh, when they occur and we can act accordingly. Okay. So um, these are a few lifecycle hooks that, uh, that an Angular component uh, is provided with. Uh, whenever uh, an Angular component or a directive is uh, instantiated with the new keyword then the constructor of that particular class gets called okay and after that uh, these are a few uh, lifecycle hooks or these are a few uh, functions that gets called uh, in after each and every step in the creation execution updation and deletion of that uh, component or directive okay now the the lifecycle hooks that we see in uh, Pink are the lifecycle hooks that every component as well as uh, directive has. But these four direct uh, these four lifecycle hooks are the ones that only the Angular components have, and uh, these aren't uh, these aren't the lifecycle hooks that uh, a directive can have. Okay, so essentially, it can be said that uh, an Angular component can have eight lifecycle hooks or it has eight lifecycle hooks while a directive has just four, uh, just four of them which are ng on changes ng on init ng do check and ng destroy okay and this is the sequence in which these lifecycle hooks get called okay so first uh, when angular creates a component or a directive by calling the new on a class then the constructor of that particular component or directive that gets called after that whenever uh, there is a change in one of the input properties on that component or directive then the ng on changes get gets called and after that uh, the ng on init gets called whenever the component has been initialized so ng on init gets called right after the first ng on changes but only once in, in a component's life cycle okay and then ng do check gets called whenever the change detector for that particular component in angular is invoked okay so this do check gives us the ability to implement our own change detection algorithm so uh, basically in this life cycle hook we can implement change detection that uh, uh, we can basically implement change detection and we can uh, detect changes that were uh, basically ignored by angular okay so we can implement our own custom change detection logic in here then there is ng on destroy that gets called right before angular is about to destroy that component so this particular component can basically be used for all the cleanup that you can uh, make to avoid memory leaks so for example if you have subscribed to an observable or you're listening to a particular event then um, you can clear all those lessons and uh, you can unsubscribe from those um, observables to avoid memory leaks after that we have the ng after content in it that gets called whenever angular is done projecting some content into the view of a particular component okay uh, we have already uh, seen what content projection is right so um, whenever angular uh, is done projecting some content onto the view of a particular component then this particular uh, life cycle hook gets called after that whenever angular uh, performs some change detection on the content of that particular component then uh, ng after content checked gets called same is the case with ng after view in it and ng after view checked but this uh, right here ng after view in it gets called whenever angular uh, has initialized the view of a particular component 
and ng after view checked gets called every time angular performs change detection on the view okay so these are all the major uh, events in in the life cycle of a component that you can tap in and you can basically um, do certain things uh, okay so in in the next video we'll talk uh, we'll see how we can implement these uh, life cycle hooks in code and we can also we'll also go through a use uh, um, certain use cases that uh, we can basically uh, Th that we can basically use uh, which particular life cycle hook in which particular case okay so in the next section we'll talk about that so i'll see you guys in the next video bye